Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, the Witcher-themed card game. And today, what we're going to do is we have a little bit of a tournament planned against a few friends. And you can see people are already starting to talk some trash. So what we're going to do is we have four people, including myself, who are going to play in this. And I'm going to roll a random number generator to see who I will go against. There are so three others. There will be Jer, there will be Dolan, and there will be Peach. And if I roll a one, we'll go Jer. If I roll a two, I'll go up against Dolan. If I roll a three, I'll go up against Peach. That is how we will do things. And then the winner, or the two winners of the first round will go against each other. The two losers of the first round will go against each other. And if I lose, or if I don't win, then uh, I will be singing in Discord. So there's a, there's a little bit on the line for me. If I do not emerge victorious so hopefully we'll manage to pull off a couple of victories here we'll see but anyways let me roll the random number generator and see I have rolled a three and therefore that means that I will be going up against Peach and so to talk a little bit about what everyone what I expect to see from everyone I would say Jer I don't really know I've actually of all the people here I have not ever played against Jer before, so he is the biggest wild card for me. Doland, I'm expecting to use a Skellige deck, and he's pretty good at that, so that's going to require that we play pretty well to merge victorious going up against him. Peach, I'm expecting one of two things. Either a monster deck, which I'm fairly familiar with because that tends to be the type of faction that I play against most often, and then she might, however, use a Syndicate deck, and I am very inexperienced with those. I've only gone against a Syndicate player once or twice, and I have never played it myself, so that makes me a little nervous if she opts to go that route. So we'll see <laughs> which deck she opts to choose. And I think I will likely <laughs> I will likely go with a combination of Northern Realms and Skellige myself. It does say Northern Realm starter deck here. That's just because I haven't renamed this one, although technically this is a deck that has many cards that I have swapped out for other ones, and including some cards that I've basically never played with before that I only just got. So that's a little bit of a risk as well, because typically I would like to have the chance to, well, I mean, ideally, have a few practice rounds with the cards and get a sense as to, first and foremost, does it seem like they're good? And secondly, in what scenarios does it seem like they are most useful? Are they best to be played in the beginning of a round, at the end of a round, round one, round two, round three? Uh, so having not played with some of these cards before, I can guess, but that's what it's gonna be, is just a guess. So hopefully we'll be able to make some of that stuff work, but I am generally speaking most comfortable with Northern Realms because I have played, I'd say roughly 50% of my games as Northern Realms, whereas I've done maybe 30% Skellige and the remaining 20% a mixture of other decks, other factions. So fingers crossed that that'll work out for us. Like I was saying before, if Peach opts to use the monster deck, then hopefully that will be something that I'm a little more familiar with, gone many times against uh, monster decks with Northern Realms. However, if it's Syndicates, then I really don't know what to expect. And that's going to make it hard to predict <laughs> what's going to happen, what cards she might play, how we ought to prepare for said cards. So we shall see. And it is Syndicates. Okay. Yikes. What is it I fancy All right, we do get to go first. So let's see. This is one of the new cards that I'm not terribly used to using yet. As is this, as is this one I've tried once or twice. I do think this is probably a good first round card. This, I think, is a second round kind of card. And this uh, seems like it's pretty well rounded, but I'm going to think I'm going to swap this out because I do see that Marion Drummer plus the, infant, the Tritum Infantry is a great combo. Love having that first round. And this card here allows us to double up on one of these two. This is a good early card to play as well. We have some setup cards too. And a stringer. And this guy here. 
So I think this is looking like a pretty solid start here. I like what we have. So we go first, and like I was saying, I think either Tritum Infantry or Tamarian Drummer. I go back and forth as to which one is better to play first. Um, I mean, if each does decide to get rid of one of them with some kind of spell to deal a bunch of damage, we could. Well, I guess we couldn't respawn it with this. If it gets locked, then we could bring it back with that. So let's play Tritum first, perhaps. And we'll pass here. We'll wait to boost it with either our hero ability or this card here. Because what Tritum's deal is, is that it only has four power, which is not terribly high. But when our opponent plays a card, or rather when we boost this card, we deal one damage to a random opponent. Okay, so the thing with the syndicates is that they have currency or coins, and co some cards spend coins, other cards give you coins, and somehow that affects how powerful you are. Again. Something along those lines. Again. For the most part, I'm just going to try to stick to the bread and butter Northern Realm strategies, and so not going to deviate from that too much here because we're dealing with some uncertainty. So we're going to play to our strengths here, that being use our drummer to boost Tritum Infantry by one at the end of each turn. Like I was saying, Tritum deals one damage to an enemy unit every time it gets boosted. So we use our character ability, boost it by one, use the drummer to boost it by one, and we've now dealt a couple of damage points to the casino, or to this casino bouncer. So the fee means that if you spend two of your coins, you can summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. However, it has insanity as well, which means if you have insufficient, oh, insufficient uh, coins, then you can still make it happen, I think. Okay, so that was well played. So this card moves an enemy to another row. So what Peach did was move Tritum away from the drummer. So now the drummer will not be boosting at each turn. However, we do have a way around this. We can make another drummer using reinforcements here. Spawn a base copy of the drummer in the ranged row and use that to boost Tritum instead. And I'm thinking that either that's the way to go. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. Do this, play it here, and end turn there. Also, we have a bleed effect on Tritum. That's the one number there, which means he would normally take one damage at the end of each turn. Now, granted, that's going to get canceled out a little bit by the, the boost that the drummer is going to give him. I was a little bit hesitant to use the drummer because it seemed like this guy might also be a good option to play early on. He has an order, meaning we can direct him to boost a unit by one. And he gets a charge, meaning he can use that ability every time someone plays a card, either us or our opponent. So that seems like playing him early is great because that means two people will play more cards and he'll continue to gain more charges. This is also usually a good early round card, the Redanian Knight. Because if you leave it in the ranged row, it will gain one power by itself at the end of each turn. We actually have a couple of these. I didn't realize that. I was going to say, maybe it's worth holding on to one of them for the next round. It's probably worth boosting one of them. Probably should have boosted it this round. I'm hesitant to boost Tritum because anytime you bring a card up to nine strength or above, there's always the risk of your opponent. Yeah using a Geralt card. Ah, Peach is talking trash. So there we go. Round one. We do have a victory here. We've held on to some pretty solid cards here, fortunately. We did burn through one Tritum card and one Drummer, which is a little bit painful. We would love to, yes, get some of those back. So we did get a Drummer here. That is pretty nice. We would love to have Tritum as well to use a similar strategy to what we just had. Redanian Knight can sort of take that same role, being one of our first or second turn cards, because it gains power over time. Anastranger 
is very similar to the Drummer. Actually, a more powerful version. This is also another good setup card. It's more so the question of who do we want to be our target. We're going to swap you out. Ooh, actually, I think that was a good draw. So, let's finish here. That is another one of the new cards that I've not yet gotten the chance to use at all. It is a pretty powerful card with a base 7 strength. It has shield, meaning the first time it gets hit, it does not take damage, and it has this defender ability, which means that when it's out there, if our opponent is trying to target a unit, they have to target this guy. He has to take the hit. So it's a good way of protecting other weaker units that need some more time to build up, like, for example, the Tamarian Drummer. So, say, if we were to play the Tamarian Drummer this turn, I think we will boost him, because it's not like we're... Holding on to that boost, waiting for us to get Tritum. But uh, if we play this guy next turn, then then that means that the drummer will be defended because Peach will have to target this guy instead. And I laugh because this card is named Peaches, and we are playing against Peach right now, so that irony is not lost on me. <laughs> I see what you did there, Peach. All right, let's put this guy down, and I'm a little hesitant to put him here. Actually, tell you what, put Anna Stranger here, which, like I said, she is very similar to the drummer in that she boosts the unit to the right by one each turn. However, if she is above her normal strength, if she's inspired, as she currently is, being located next to the drummer, then she gets to boost characters on either side, so she can now be basically twice as powerful, and I wonder if we still opt to go with the super support setup, playing this guy, and like I was saying before, ideally we would have a Tritum guy to target, so that every time he gets boosted, he deals some damage, because that would be our primary form of offense. Here we're mostly just going to be raising our, our own strength without doing much to damage Peach is a little bit of a risk. Um, and we can boost. I'm gonna wait. I mean, theoretically, we probably should use that ability now. I don't necessarily know which person I want to target with it. It's partially why I'm waiting. And also, like I was saying before, I don't really want to get to 9 strength if we can avoid it. Or at least lay that as much as possible. So that if Peach does have a Geralt of Rivia card capable of outright destroying a 9 strength card, then, well, I suppose you could make the case that it's best to have that happen as soon as possible. So let's, let's make it happen here. We'll boost Anna Stranger on the assumption that if Peach does have the Geralt card, that she'll get rid of the Temerian Drummer. Anna Stranger will stop getting boosted. Mm, we probably should have played this early as well. And let's play our Defender here. So that way, if Peach does want to do any sort of offensive abilities, like even if even if she wants to use Geralt of Rivia, she cannot because she would have to go for this guy, not the Temerian Drummer, who's the only card above 9. So this guy, I think, will serve us well, allowing us to basically continue to boost the Drummer, Anna Stringer, all these people above 9 without worrying about having Geralt come in and spoil the fun. B3, gain a shield. Did she spend 3? She does have 6 coins right now, but it is possible, although it doesn't seem like she did it yet. Now, as for what we want to do here, these are sort of the fundamental cards that I wanted to play. Ideally, we would be able to hold on to these cards for round 3, because this guy needs some time to charge up. I think, actually, we can play this card. We'll play this, and what's going to happen is... Let's put it here. It's going to allow us to get back the drummer. Might even give us all the drummers. Just one drummer. Now, oh, let's boost you, I suppose. And so that way, if we do go to round three, then we can still get a really strong piece back in our deck. Uh, 
That looks like a strong card, as it is an epic rarity. That purple color in the corner there. Let's take a closer look. Profit two, so gain two coins. Tribute five. So if you choose to spend five, you can spawn one of these cards and summon it to this row. And she has done that. And this is the card we were looking at before. Every time we play a unit, these cards will get boosted. So we want to be kind of wary of that. Make sure that we're not going too crazy playing units because although we do have a lead at the moment, not that big of a lead. We could use our lock and reset ability, which is a little tempting. Basically what that does is it removes a character's abilities and sets them back to their original value. So like this card would go back down to a four and it would no longer get boosted every time each game's coins. And that seems like that is a good route for us to take right now. So I will continue to boost things before our turn ends. Now we should have a pretty sizable lead. I'm not sure if Peach can come back from this. I would kind of like to pass at the end of this turn. Because these cards... I mean, this card is still useful at this stage. Tales, tales. Novigrad's built. But this guy, like I was saying before, needs time to charge up. So playing him late in a round like this, he's only going to get weaker and weaker. And this card, if we wanted to play it, we should have played the first. Or close to first. So... I mean, Peach is going to play everything that she has, because if she loses this round, then it's over. So, I don't expect Peach to pass. However, I do think that we probably still want to play this guy in hopes of making us have high enough strength that there's no way that she can win this round. So, we have one, two, three, four, five boosted units. This card gets boosted by one for each boosted unit, so it'll be an eight when we play it. Let's do that, and then let's also boost some friends. And then, like I said, I anticipate that that will be our last turn. We have a 20 strength lead at the moment, which is good. But if Peach has any tricks up her sleeve, then we could be in trouble. What does this card do? If you pay two, you can boost yourself by two. We have five, and I think she did at that point in time, boost self by three instead. Okay, so here we find ourselves with a relatively comfortable lead. We could theoretically play these cards in hopes of bringing ourselves without a shadow of a doubt um, untouchable for this round, which I suppose maybe is the right answer, but we're in a little bit of game theory mode here where we also need to think about, okay, but what if... Peach has a way to turn the tide on us and make it so that she can win this round. And then we're going to round three, and we would love to still have some decent cards to put us in a strong position for that round three. And that's why I do like having some early round cards in hand. So that, that way, if we do go to round three, we still have some good things to build around. We're not in a, a vulnerable position. So Peach will not pass here, I assume. Otherwise, it's game over. She'll do everything she can. Needs to make up 14 strength in three turns now. Granted, even though we've passed, the Tamarian Drummer and Anna Stranger will continue to boost each other. So our number will actually continue to go up, which Peach may not realize. We're basically gonna, as soon as she's done with her turn, it's gonna go back to us. We're gonna pass automatically. However, we are going to go up by three, because, Aunt, as you just saw there, Anna Stranga will boost the Tamarian Drummer, and this guy, whereas Tamarian Drummer will boost Anna Stranger. So we're going up by three each turn. So that is going to make us a little bit hard to catch here. However, she's getting closer. One card left. Can she make it happen? Well, she's spending big. Looks like she might be able to pull it off. Thunderbolt will boost her by six. Oh, it's going to be close. Mental Maths. She's going to win by one, it looks like. If not, slightly more. However, we will have card advantage for that last round. Okay, so there we go. She did win round two there, so we'll go to round three. We do have two card advantage on her. Redanian Knight and Mantlet. 
We did get the Tamarian Drummer back. A couple of Tamarian Drummers. Now, granted, with a relatively short round here, only five cards to play, it's not as strong as it once was, and getting two of them, I think, is not terribly significant, so I'm actually going to swap one of them out. Geralt of Rivia is a tough one. He is fantastic, obviously, if Peach does happen to have a nine-strength card. If not, then he only has three strength himself, and he's not terribly powerful. I think I'm going to keep him just in case she has an ace up her sleeve. Bone Talisman boosts everyone by one. That means it has four strength in total at best. I think this was a very lucky draw. This is another one of the new cards that I've not yet played. However, if I remember correctly, it's pretty strong. He is epic. Whenever you, he receives a boost, give bleeding a random enemy unit for two turns. No, that's the future. Hmm. Okay. So this card that Peach just played, heal an allied unit. She put in the melee row. So that did not do anything. Boost an allied unit by three if it's in the range row. Okay, so it seems like this was a little bit of a throwaway card. Now, we would... We have several... Basically, all these cards are early round cards, which is a little tricky, because we'd like to play them all right now. And what is technically the most efficient way to go? I'm going to assume that Peach is not going to be dealing much damage, so I'm not going to prioritize that. Instead, I think I'm going to prioritize getting you out to get that bleed effect going as early as possible. And I'm going to boost him. That will be enough bleed to theoretically take out this enemy here over time. Okay. What is this ability here? Gain two coins at the beginning of the round. Refresh this ability. The hordes require two less coins to trigger. Okay. Peach only has one card remaining, and this guy, we're going to continue to try to boost. We're going to do that by playing the Tamarian Drummer next to him. Next turn will probably be... Okay, so that's overkill. That's unfortunate. That bleed effect that he deals whenever he gets boosted is random who it applies to, so... This card already had enough bleed on it to take it out. Oh, locking. Okay. Who does she choose to lock? Okay, I think that was actually a mistake. So, she had the choice of locking, meaning removing the special ability from either the Temerian Drummer or Nathaniel here. Now, Nathaniel can do the lead, like we were just saying, whereas the Drummer gives the boost. The thing is, we have other sources of boosting, namely our character skill, whereas we did not have other ways of inflicting bleed. So that's why I think that was actually a bit of a mistake there on Peach's part. Up now. now, as for whether we can capitalize on that opportunity. Hopefully, we can here. It would seem as though that would be the case. We can boost Nathaniel with that hero power. This Redanian Knight will go up by one each round. Play the Mantlet. At this point, it's not terribly relevant. It will give us some additional armor on Geralt, but he's not going to get damaged at this point. Geralt, as I was saying before, doesn't have any nine strength or higher card to destroy so he's just a three strength card himself which is not terribly good however at this point we do already have a lead so we're doing okay here we will emerge victorious from this one well played peach i didn't know what to expect for sure on uh round two there and putting up 75 strength there was a strong showing absolutely so good thing that ultimately we did decide to hold off a little bit Keep a couple of cards in hand so that way we did have the card advantage and that did prove to be the difference maker here in round three. But well played, Peach. Okay, and here we see the end result of the other game between Jer and Dolan. And we see Dolan won round one and round two. And we see that, as I suspected, he is using a Skellige deck, so that is telling, because then we can sort of anticipate what he might roll out against us as well. I would suspect that he will likely use the same deck against us as well. So it will be us against Dolan, and then Peach will play against Jer. All right, so let's send a challenge to Dolan in that case. And I think we will continue to use the Northern Realms deck because I'm not sure what the best way to go against Skellige is. I obviously have played Skellige a fair amount myself, but I'm a little bit wary of playing Skellige against Skellige. I'm not sure whose deck has better.
better cards, technically speaking. Um, I did throw in some new ones into our Skellige deck, but I did not get the chance to practice with them at all. So, again, I'm a little wary of giving that a shot for the first time here. So for that reason, I think I will continue to stick with what is a little bit more familiar, and that would be the Northern Realms deck here. And yes, like I said, we did have some new cards from that as well. However, the general strategy, I think, is still very much the same for Northern Realms. It is, for the most part, if you can, get down, try to infantry, and just find all the various ways to boost him and deal damage along the way. And... We mostly just picked up new ways to do that boosting. But that doesn't really change our overall strategy at all. It just gives us a few more avenues through which to do that. Whereas on the Skellige side, I think some of the cards that I picked up are a little more fundamentally different than the other cards that I've used in Skellige in the past. So that makes me a little cautious there. We might be able to pull it off, but um, it might just be that it turns out that Sticking with something that is a little more familiar, especially when Dolan will be, I assume, using his Galaga deck himself, meaning a deck that he is familiar with. That's basically, to me, that's a sign that we ought to go for something that we feel like we're not going to make any silly mistakes. We're not going to make any big misplays with this deck, because I think that Dolan is probably, if I'm not mistaken, might be the most experienced of the opponents that we're going against here. All right, and Dolan is ready to go, so... We could opt to swap decks here, like I was saying. The alternative, I think, would be to go the Skellige deck. But I think I'm going to go with Northern Realms. It worked out well for us in the previous round. Hopefully it will work out well for us this time. We'll see if Dolan has any tricks up his sleeve. He is going with Skellige, as anticipated. Does he have any new cards that I have not yet seen him play? I don't know. We'll just have to see. As for what we want to use for our own starting deck, or starting hand, love to see Tridem. Question is, do we have ways to boost him? This guy can do it. And, hmm, we do have a few other ways. This is not one of our better cards. Let's swap that out. That's a locking unit. We do have a couple of Geralt's here, which is not bad. However, it's a little bit more, I guess you could say, offensive. Um, destroying our opponents and weakening our opponents rather than boosting ourselves. I think that I'm going to get rid of one of our lock cards here and get the drummer. Oh, lucky redraws there at the last minute. Okay, love to see it. So, again, the question of do we go with the drummer first or do we go with infantry first? I think I am expecting, because Dolan is playing with a Skellige deck, that he will probably have a little bit more damaging abilities than Peach was using with the Syndicate, so this first card that we play is not necessarily all that safe. So, fortunately, we do have... Eh, well, reinforcements can only respawn a card, or spawn another version of a card that is already out there. So for that reason, I think it's not necessarily that this sure that this guy is going to survive. Let's boost him now. Ideally, we would normally wait a turn. Wait until... He has a card out there so that when we apply the boost, it will deal some damage to someone. However, just to give ourselves a little bit more margin for error in case he's planning on hitting Tridem with some sort of damaging ability, gives us a little more, like that, a little more ability to survive it. Now, granted, he used his hero ability, which deals one damage. He might have some other abilities that deal four on top of that, and it looks like he's targeting it. Yep. Okay, so that was the risk of playing Tridem first. So, I'm assuming, then, that it is likely that he does not have the ability to take out another card outright like that. And that means that the primary question becomes, who is the target of our boosting? It was previously Tridem. We have other sources of boosting, but no obvious person to be the boost id. So... I think we play the Temerian Drummer here. Left. And we play it by ear a little bit. Right. We may end up boosting some cards that are usually the ones doing the boosting. That's not the end of the world, per se. Okay, so this is a very strong early round card. So that is one that, as a Skelga player, myself, I would love to see at the beginning of the, of the match. 
It deals one damage whenever your opponent plays a card. So if we could silence that guy, I think that would be fantastic. And this might also be an opportunity for us to lock it. Our world is in I think that's going to be of interest to us. And let's lose the drummer for now. We'll end our turn here. Going to continue to hold on to this card until we play something that will not get boosted up to 9 or higher. Because we have no reason to believe that Dolan does not have Geralt hanging out in his hand. So I think we need to act on the assumption that he does until proven otherwise. Okay, so again, he is playing several cards that will deal damage, which was the reason why it doesn't necessarily make us safe. Even once we play cards. Now, this would be a great card to get out early. Theoretically, I think this might even be better than the drummer. I mean, it should be. It's a gold card, right? But... The reason for that is Drummer boosts one per round, whereas this guy gets a charge every time we play a card and every time our opponent plays a card. So in theory, it's getting two, uh, or the ability to boost twice per round, therefore is, theoretically, twice as good. Sometimes the price and also boost him. So I think that is of interest. And we'll apply the boost to the Drummer, because the Drummer will remain at five unless boosted from another source, whereas... The drummer is going to boost Dugare of Bull every turn. So this guy's going to go up. This guy's not going to go up unless we make a point of making him go up. So to keep him safe, we'll target him there. And so Dolan has played at least one very good early round card. This card that he played second, I'm not a huge fan of. I think that's one of the weaker Skelga cards. So it'll be interesting to see what route he takes here goes for the long ship, which can deal one damage to itself, and in doing so, also one damage to an opponent. He opts to take that route here. And I think I'm okay with that, because although he can deal one damage per turn, he can do that each turn. It does recharge each turn. The thing is, Dugare, the card that he just damaged, will get boosted once every turn by the Temerian Drummer, so we can at least keep pace with that. However, if we use... Corvo, as well as Royal Inspiration, we can certainly outpace that. Could also create another drummer here, and I'm very tempted to do that. I think I will. And we'll use the drummer to boost the drummer. And we'll boost the drummer like this. And like this. And this. And this, because he still will not be at 9 just yet. So I think this puts us in a very strong position here, where the couple of drummers gives us, and I still don't know how to say his name, but Corvo here um, will give us some consistent boost ability. So each turn, regardless of what we play, we will get stronger, and we already have a lead. So I'm thinking this might be a good time for Dolan to pass, and hope that, yeah, round two or three bodes better for him. We'll obviously pass as well. Take the victory here. And from a card standpoint, we have five. How many does Zolan have? He might have six. He does. So he has the slightest of card advantages. Oh, and I love this card in this circumstance. Okay. So, let's see. We can take a look here. This would be our first turn card, I think. Because it does get boosted once per round. This card, Lock and Reset, is a good thing to have to weaken a strong unit that Dolan might have. However, we do have Geralt of Rivia and Geralt Yurden. This resets cards. This destroys cards that are 9 or higher. So I think... Oh, and we got Trident. Okay. Hold on. We can make this work. We can make this work. Now we're looking more so for support because... Well... Eh, yeah. Okay. Not what we were looking for, per se. Looking for support because, like I was saying before, Tridem is the ideal target for us um, of those boosts because he does deal that damage. Now, what I'm going to do here, however, is I'm actually going to wait for to play Trident because even if we boost him immediately, there's still no card on the other side to get damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Princess Pavetta. The reason why I was so excited to see her is because we can shuffle a bronze unit and all copies of it from our graveyard into our deck. Why is that significant? I will show you. 
Now we can bring all of our drummers back, which is not something that we can do this turn, or this round even, in all likelihood. But it does mean that if we do go to round three, then we have a very couple of very strong cards back at our disposal, and we have Tritum already, which would be the ideal target of said cards. Now, Princess Pavetta is kind of the ideal card for this scenario where you win round one. You're not necessarily sure if you want to invest heavily in round two because your opponent has a card advantage, albeit a small one. And so if we were to pass here, we would have 10 cards. Dolan can only get up to 10 cards for round three, so we'd be even from a card standpoint. We would have some of our best cards back because we use this ability to get the, the drummer going. And uh, Dolan does need to play at least one more card to bring himself ahead of us, otherwise he just loses outright. So, hmm. Do we deliberately... Tell you what, I think we throw away what I would consider one of our weakest cards here. It does mean we would have nine cards for the next round, but I think that's okay. Reason for that being, Dolan is going to need to continue to play cards himself to keep pace. And we still have our strongest cards remaining. So our hope here is that Dolan overreacts and uses some really strong cards here, overinvests in this round when I'm willing to hand him the victory for this round. So ideally he should play, from his perspective, ideally he would play just strong enough cards to barely eke out a win. That was a pretty strong card that he played there. It allows him to play any card he wants from his deck. And he opted to bring back that strong early round card, and this is ideal. So what we do here is we pass. That means that in round three, we will have nine cards. Doland needs to play another card to take the lead here. Otherwise, he loses outright. So that means that we will be even from a card standpoint. However, I think that we have better cards at our disposal. And he does seem to have caught on here, I think, because that is probably not one of his stronger cards there. So he'll take this round. We're taking a little bit of a risk here, of course, letting this go to round three. But I think we've set ourselves up fairly well here where we have both Geralt's. We have the ability to lock and reset a card. We have Tridem. We have Anna Stringer. Oh my god. This is like the perfect setup in terms of cards. This is the target. This is a boost. This is another boost. This is another early round potential target. This blocks the things that Dolan would potentially try to take out. And these are the things that weaken Dolan. This is also a little bit of a complimentary boost, so I love it. Not changing it. We'll see what he has. So that is a strong card to play first, like I was saying. Question is, is it strong enough that we are so concerned about it that we want to actually take it out with the lock and reset? Normally I would say that would be overreacting to it. However, bear in mind, he's playing this on the first turn. It deals one damage every time we play a card. We have nine cards. One of which is a spell and not a, a unit, but... For every other card, you know, that collectively, that's 8 damage, which is a lot. Granted, some of them will have armor. I think we will play Tritum here. Joel being, he will take some damage there. But we boost him. And this is our best way to take this guy out without needing to sacrifice the lock and reset ability, which would outright get rid of that damaging ability on this card. It's a little bit of a risk because he could potentially take out Tritum. If he does, then we'll use the Verdanian Knight as our new target. So it's good that we have this because this is our plan B. He is locking Tritum. Which is well played. For the same reason I was considering locking this card here. They're truly, they're very similar cards. They're both cards that deal roughly one damage per turn. So, now that we know he's probably not going to have any locks remaining, do we counter with a bit of a lock ourselves? We could potentially. I know, obviously, maybe it would have still been best to play this in the first turn, so that Tritum didn't end up taking one damage from this guy. But the reason why I'm considering it now is because 
we've lost our ability, or at least our best ability, to consistently deal damage. In order to level the playing field, it might be a good idea to do a similar thing to Doland. I think that is the way to go. I do think so. And then if he does play a really strong card later on, or manages to boost a card later on, then we have Geralt of Rivia, in case that card is above a 9, or if it's just generally becoming powerful and may not have quite reached the 9 threshold, or maybe he's splitting that strength across multiple cards, then Geralt Yurden will be our play there. Now, Elder Bear is a strong card, strength 6. It doesn't have any additional abilities, however. And for that reason, it will be... Well, it's not going to change things up too much. Now, I think we play Tamarian Drummer and or Anna Stringer as early as possible. I will still play her here. The assumption here is that Dolan probably does not have any more ability to lock. So therefore, these cards should be pretty safe. At least from that. He may still be able to deal damage. That certainly would be possible. He does have his hero ability that is able to do that. But I don't... That's probably what he's targeting her for right now. Yep. However, we play Tamarian Drummer next to Anna Stranger next turn, which is what I intend to do, barring some other thing happening. Then we will be able to um, continue to have her boosted. And we'll get that boost across the board here for everyone in this row. So the earlier we get that happening, the better. Now, he did gain some additional damage ability by using this. And that is not what we wanted to see, because that does mean that even if we play this card now, it'll still be one turn before she's boosted, and therefore one turn before she can uh, start boosting the drummer and Tritum simultaneously. And between this card here and his hero ability, yes, he is able to deal a pretty sizable amount of damage. So this is a little bit scary here. Next card I think we'll play will be uh, this guy because he is the defender. We'll play him in this row, which means that he will no longer be able to target these guys. Arguably should have played him earlier. Never need ask me twice. And I think we deliberately target Anna Stranger because the earlier we can get her boosted, the better. And then we'll probably play Redanian Knight next. Again, a card that would have been best played early, but we had a lot of cards that we wanted to play early, these three. And ultimately, we needed to play this guy. Otherwise, these guys were in jeopardy of getting taken out altogether. You're still able to... What? I'm pretty sure he's not supposed to be able to do that. He's supposed to only be able to attack this guy. The opponent cannot target other cards on, on this row. Ah, uh, well, never mind. I misplayed it. And oh, okay. So that is a really strong card there. It's about to become an 11. This is the perfect example of what we were saving Geralt of Rivia to do. So, yes, this was definitely a misplay here in that case. Um, I don't think there's any reason why we necessarily need to do that right now. I think it is actually better for us to prioritize boosting Anna Stranger as quickly as possible. And way to do that would be to play Stennis in the melee row. Boost her by four. Bringing her up to seven. Immediately getting her to the point where she can boost on either side of her. Again, that does mean Redania Knight. Every time we wait a turn, it does get weaker. Our three cards, Dolan's three cards. How are we looking? Remember that we will be able to outright remove that 11 there, so that will be a big difference maker. So we do have that up our sleeve. We also have the ability to reset a row, which at the moment, once we take this guy out, it's not a clear target anymore in terms of which row we ought to do that reset on. Now, we can use it on our own cards as well, so... We could do it here, in which case it'll do precisely nothing, because this guy isn't boosted at all. If we play Geralt here, then Geralt won't be boosted at all either. Um, so that's the simple option. All right, now he can get rid of a card here. That was objectively a bad decision. Um, he could have outright removed Tamarian Drummer, which he should have done, because Tamarian Drummer will be boosting Anna Stranger every turn, whereas... Stannis had already done his thing. He'd already done his boosting. So he was kind of done. I mean, he was a four-strength card, yes. Um, granted, Tamarian Drummer is only strength two. However, in the long term, it was going to be uh, a more valuable card to us than Stannis was. 
Now, with our boost, who ought we target here? I think we do deliberately target the drummer in case Dolan does have any other sources of damage. We want to keep that guy safe. And that does mean that we will now get boosted by four each turn. So we will hopefully slowly catch up to him. That is a strong card there. But remember, we do still have Geralt of Rivia in our back pocket here. So that is sort of the ace up our sleeve. This is a secondary ace, but at the moment it's not looking like it's going to do too much for us. So I think we hold on to this guy and wait to the last turn, see if there is, in fact, a way to make this useful for us. Um, this will now be our throwaway row after we play Geralt of Rivia, because there are only no boosted cards here. So worse comes to worse. We play Geralt, Yurden. We reset this row, and it, his special ability does nothing. He's just a two-strength card, in which case he's not that strong. But let's see how the numbers stack up here. We are now in the lead by a fairly sizable amount. Now, is this Geralt of Rivia as well and can take out Anna Stringer? If it is, then we're in trouble. We shall see. If it isn't, it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We might be in trouble here. How do the numbers stack up here? So we're going to get one boost here. We're going to get one boost here as well. I'm not sure this is going to work out in our favor. We go here. We're going to get boosted to 23. Then we use Geralt. We're going to get up to 24. Reset isn't going to do anything. So we're going to be at 24. Or actually... Uh, We'll get boosted by one here. It'll bring us to 23. Garrett will bring us up to 25. We won't be able to reset. So, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to lose here. And ultimately, had we played uh, Domnamir of Troy in the correct row, we probably would have won. So that ultimately was the misplay that that uh, cost us quite a bit. Maybe we could have been better off if we had opted to um, try to win round two rather than all sneaky go for round three so we lost well played dolan very well played round three there and like i said would it have been better had we gone for round two i don't know but well played and it looks like i'm in for some singing